Hello and welcome to Lab 6 tutorial for CST336. It's Sam again. So we're just going to jump right in. So my hosting is, I'm having some problem with CSUMB hosting, so I will be writing code in Appana, but I will be manually uploading with FileZilla to my personal hosting. So in Appana, I have created a lab6.html default HTML5 document, and I've deleted the inside the div junk that it randomly inserts for you. And we're just going to start off by showing what we're going to be writing, which is a little vocabulary quiz. So far I have a blank page. And the first thing we're going to do is attach jQuery. So if you Google jQuery link API, you'll see that there's this download jQuery link. It's about the fourth one down. And if you scroll halfway down, you'll see this script for jQuery. You're going to copy, paste it in your head, and now you've attached jQuery to this document. That's It's that easy. And then the next thing we're going to do is write the beginning first question and the JavaScript that goes with it in this part. So first step, we're going to grab some HTML in the div, paste it in. It's just a simple H2. And then we've created a div ID question one, just named Q1 and h3 uh, and then we've added four images. Uh, images will be in a zip on iLearn or you can download off the example just right click and save image as. They're named super simply and if we go back to our code I've already created an image folder in my hosting and I named it IMG and it has the four images we need. So we go back to the code and we save it's got just the div ID and our four images. And I'm going to upload. Obviously, you won't have to do this, but I am right now. And you can reload and see that we've written everything, but the images are a little big. So we're going to just write a quick CSS to make them a little bit smaller. So I'm going to open a style in my head below where we jQuery. And I'm just going to image selector and then the brackets to open with the 100 pixels cursor pointer. So the image will be smaller and when you hover over them, it'll be a pointer. So I'm gonna upload again, reload, and you can see the images are smaller and now there's a pointer hovering. So now I'm gonna write the jQuery so that the image gets bigger when you hover over and the green box goes around when you click. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to grab script, and the first step, go down to the bottom of our body, paste it in, and close the script tag. So now, first we're declaring a variable called answer, but we're not assigning it to anything. Then we're writing two mouse enter, and one mouse enter, and one mouse leave function, two functions in total. We're selecting from the ID Q1 image, so whatever image we are mouse entering or leaving will depend on these, because this all the images are in the ID of Q1. That's how we're selecting them. Then mouse enter and mouse leave are pretty explanatory. And then we're using the dollar sign this. So what's happening is based on what you click once you, what you enter or leave from, it'll do the CSS style to that element. That's what the dollar sign this is saying. So when we enter, CSS is going to change the width of whatever image to 125 pixels, and when we leave that image, this .css is changing the width back to 100. So when we save and upload again and reload, you can see now it'll change the image to be a little bit bigger depending on which one you hover. And the next thing we do is we're going to write a click function. So we're using the same Q1 image, so whatever image you click on, we're doing using a selector again, Q1 image, .css. First we're making the border nothing, then we're doing this, .css, border, 5 pixels, solid green. So this style here, remember that it, instead of it being border, colon, 5 pixels, green, semicolon, it's quotation for the first, the left half, and then a comma instead of the colon, five pixels. And then we're also grabbing the attribute of whatever we just clicked on and storing the attribute ID. So 
dot attribute can work for many different things. You could do ID or value or something else, any attribute. Source, for example, we could be grabbing the source if we wanted to, but we're grabbing the ID. So later we can show, we can check if the user clicked on the right thing. And if we take away this alert and save it, you can see that when I click on one of these, it's going to alert me what the ID is so that I can grade. So I'm storing whatever the user clicked in answer one. So I'm going to re-comment out alert so that it doesn't happen all the time. And you can go there and reload and see that the green box is being added to whatever we click. So this is part one of lab six, and in the second half I'll cover the second two questions and grading.